Hello friends, and welcome to videos from the center. Not left, not right, kind of just poking fun at things that go against core principles and common sense. This story we have from BuzzFeed, and this is oh, just too good. You know what I really love? I really love being right all the time, okay? I don't think I'm right all the time, I just like it when I'm right more often than not. This is a story called, Everything I Wrote Was True and Accurate. So why did Facebook purge my work? It's absurd that Facebook thinks it can define what is legitimate news, given its well-documented abuses of power and invasions of privacy. Mark Belisle, a BuzzFeed contributor. Hmm. This is interesting. Now, why would this be a funny story and what would I be right about? Perhaps it's that this, this page, this story, is from a man who worked for a site called Reverb News. He says, last week Facebook purged 559 pages from its site saying the pages had consistently broken our rules against spam and coordinated inauthentic behavior and explaining the mass deletion. A Facebook executive told the New York Times, the majority of the information operations we see are domestic actors. The social network, according to the Times, took down the pages as part of its struggle to navigate the blurry lines between free speech and disinformation. You see where this is going? Probably, you probably read the title of this video so you know where I'm going. From 2014 to 2017, I worked as the world affairs editor at Reverb Press, one of the pages that was targeted. Facebook's characterization of the kind of work we did and our motives for doing it is wrong. And those who support a free press in America should be very worried about how the company disappeared our page. Should we? Should we Reverb Press? Because I'm pretty sure you guys have multiple ar articles cheering for Alex Jones being taken down. Here's one, here's two, here's three. They ran a story from August 6th, Alex Jones is finished on Facebook and the internet is rejoicing. They called it a surprisingly happy story in the Trump era. Now these pages are basically just, it's just an aggregation of tweets, right? That's, that's what they do. They say, Jones may have a large following, but there are far more people tired of his parroting of fake news and unproven conspiracy theories. To celebrate his removal, we are going to share some of the funniest and sharpest responses to Jones's whining. Allow me to play the world's smallest violin. No, listen, you ran on Reverb Press numerous stories celebrating the banning of Alex Jones because you didn't like what he was doing and you thought it was fake news. I'm not a big fan of Alex Jones. Admittedly, I think Reverb Press is worse than Alex Jones. Alex Jones has a lot of kooky content, right? Here's the thing. When Jones goes on his show and screams, they're turning the frickin' frogs gay, he's, kind of, he's hyperbolic, okay? There is a chemical called atrazine, which can make frogs hermaphrodites. It's a very complicated story. And Jones is being hyperbolic. And he often has kooky, weird stories like this. But there's a difference between being kooky and weird and just being a trash blog, okay? Alex Jones had reporters on the ground. I'm not a big, look, I'm not a huge fan of Alex Jones or anything he did. And this is something you commonly hear among the centrists and people in the intellectual dark web. We always preface this with, this is not a defense of Alex Jones and we tend not to like him. It's fine if you do, I get it. The point is, Reverb Press, you can't run multiple stories cheering, celebrating the banning of Alex Jones for what you think is a justified reason, and then pen an op-ed in BuzzFeed going, but why did they ban us? Because, because they can. Because how many times do we have to say, when they ban Alex Jones, they're gonna ban you next? <sighs> Glenn Greenwald called this the, uh, what, what did he say? He said something like, if there's any group that can't learn, it's leftists cheering for censorship. It is, I, I believe, it is extremely, it is way more likely the left will be censored over the right when things get really bad. Why? Conservatives are okay, for the most part, with the status quo. The left wants revolution. Any group in power wants to maintain the status quo. What does that mean? There are certain elements on the right that they do want to ban. But it is much more likely that fringe revolutionary elements of the left are the ones who are going to get the ban hammer. And as I've, try, I've tried, I've tried to explain to these people, look, you don't have to like Alex Jones to defend the principle of him saying the things he wants. Because here's, here's the way I, I described it before. Listen, let's say you genuinely believe Alex Jones is mentally ill. If you think that is a reason for banning him, what you're actually saying is you don't think mentally ill people have a right to express themselves. Okay, let's say you think Alex Jones is stupid. 
What you're saying is you think stupid people shouldn't have a right to express themselves. Do I take issue with fake news more than most? Like, I mean, like 20% of the videos I make are criticizing various news outlets for fake news. In fact, the video on my main channel literally calls out a Republican for publishing something misleading, not, not necessarily fake news, but kind of misleading. So I, for one, really do hate fake news. But I also recognize that we have free speech. And that means you can't assume someone is pumping out bullshit simply because they're trying to steal, they're trying to generate money. We, we just don't know. We don't know. And if you want to get into a civil case and start suing people and threatening them because you know they're willfully misleading people, it's, it's tough. Because I think people, no matter how smart, no matter how stupid, have a right to speak. All right? Let's do this. I, I pulled up these stories from Reverb Press, but let's see what Reverb Press has on their front page. Kanye West delivers bizarre rambling rant during Trump visit. Sure, that's your opinion. They've got uh, Trump promises report on missing Washington Post journalist. That's, 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 that one's okay. There you go. They got the Post Kavanaugh. Melania Trump sheds doubt on women abuse claims. Some of these are actually, are actually okay. Here's the thing, though. Infowars had similar headlines, too. Look, to me, this is a far-left version of basically the same thing, right? It's, it's far-left opinion. They're cheering for the demise of Alex Jones. And then when their psych gets pulled, they're like, but why us? Why us? Because the powers that be don't care if you're left or right. They care if you're a threat to their system. And that means the left is more likely to be that threat. The right has kooky weirdos, you know, like people associated with the right might be, you know, I, I don't want to call any group out specifically, but yes, there are kooky weirdos. Well, I should say this on the left and the right, but kooky weirdos on the right tend to be much more focused on politics. However, focus on politics doesn't mean revolution. It means they actually support in a lot of ways, the system, the left for the most part are the ones calling for rapid revolutionary change. And in my opinion, they're the, look, the left is what, like a thousand times more likely to go out and protest and occupy parks, things like that. So who do you think the, the powers that be, Facebook, is going to be more concerned with? Alex Jones, who has a bunch of keyboard warriors watching, going like, you go, Alex. Or the people who literally camped in New York City in Zuccotti Park for months and were actually disruptive to the economy. I'll tell you what, if, if, if you had to place your chips on a bet, I bet Facebook and media and government officials are going to be like, let's make sure that doesn't happen again. Well, what about the people on the right, like Alex Jones? Oh, whatever, they just believe weird shit. Plain and simple. He says, to begin with, Reverb has give, was given no heads up, no warning, no chance to make things right. It learned it was being purged at the same time everyone else did, according to my former colleague, James Reader, its managing editor. He told me that long before the closure, he had been trying to communicate with Facebook to make sure that the page was following its best practices, but he could never get a hold of anyone. They basically shut everybody down and sent them the same boilerplate thing to all pages. Is that any way to treat a news publisher? Yeah, a news publisher. And, and look... The answer is, they should be allowed to be on Facebook. But here's what's omitted from this story. Was Alex Jones engaging in a practice where he was sharing administrator access to dozens of other pages so that they could game the algorithm? I don't know. But I don't believe that was ever part of any of the reported stories. However, in this instance, I can't speak exactly to Reverb Press, but I do know that at least... A decent amount of these pages that were purged were sharing administrator access and they were creating semi-clones of each other's pages or of their own pages. So basically, you'd have cop, lo cop, uh, cop stop, cop watch, cop block, cop logic, film police, film the cops, filming police, filming policing. And what they would do is they would create a bunch of pages that were all very similar, post the same story to a bunch of different pages, and that would game the algorithm by making Facebook think it was a really popular story that was going viral. And that would boost it in the algorithm and maybe even getting on a trending list, make it more likely to appear in people's feeds. One person that an image posted, he had, he had access to like something like 20 plus pages and some were personal pages of individuals. Why? Because it's a thing they did where they would share admin access so they could boost their own content in the algorithm. That's one of the reasons Facebook got rid of them. So here, here, look, the reason Alex Jones was banned, in my opinion, was semi illegitimate. Jones has done things that are questionable that Facebook, Twitter, and these other platforms could say, oh, 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 you broke the rules. Now, is it selective enforcement? Oh, hell yeah. I think it absolutely is selective enforcement. But was Alex Jones gaming the system? No, he was just making content consistently. He was hiring people, and a lot of people didn't like what he was doing. I'm one of them. I don't, I'm not saying I hate everything InfoWars has ever done. No, I, I've appeared on InfoWars before, uh, and I did so because I thought it would be good for me to speak my opinions to their audience. 
Should they be banned? No. However, in this instance, should they, should should reverb have been banned? And again, in my opinion, I don't think so. However, there's actually evidence to suggest they literally broke the rules. These people who cheered, my God, talk about a group of people who can never learn their lesson. He said, I'm extremely proud of the work that my colleagues and I have done at Reverb Press. I helped create a platform for many talented writers from among underrepresented voices in American media. Those individuals were free to report and opine on the news however they wanted to, as long as they stuck to the facts and our editorial guidelines. I personally wrote and published about 500 articles on Reverb Press over three years, and did some of the most important research and analysis of my career while working there. Facebook's misrepresentation of the kind of work that we did can't take, away, take, take that away from me. Here's what I'd love to see. I'd love to see Alex Jones pen an op-ed for BuzzFeed News when they took him down. Oh, but that'll never happen. BuzzFeed News will give a voice to the guy whose page might have actually been breaking the rules. And look, that's not my opinion. I actually have connections. I know I have sources who are within this network who told me individuals would buy access to high-profile pages to pump the algorithm, okay? That's, what I've been, that's, that's what's told to me from sources working within the network. I'm not saying it's 100% true. I'm saying that to the best of my ability, that's what I discovered. Does it mean Reverb pressed anything wrong? No, it doesn't. It just means there's a potential, in my opinion, for an actual nefarious activity that resulted in them being shut down. And BuzzFeed News will say, you know what? Why don't you come and write an op-ed? I don't know exactly what happened, but this guy writes an op-ed complaining about how Facebook took him down. And here, one more time. Let me go back. Let, let, me, let me show you him uh, talking about how we're going to, uh, to celebrate his removal. That's right, Reverb Press, to celebrate Alex Jones' removal. And you know what? You got these stories? I'm not even going to celebrate Reverb Press's removal. You can see I'm frustrated and angry. It's because I told you this was going to happen. We all did. We make videos time and time again. We post tweets saying, dude, do not celebrate this. They will take you down next. And what did they say? Oh, the stupid centrists are actually Nazis. And then here we go. You're gone. This is some of the most mind-numbing... I got more videos coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for sticking around. And, uh, um... More videos coming up.